Hi, welcome back. I thought I'd probably best give you a little more information about the books I gushed about last time. <laughs> because all I did was gush and didn't actually give you anything useful. So, I'm going to talk about the novellas by Nevo that I read a few weeks ago. The Empress of Salt and Fortune. The Empress has died, and on her death, locations where she in resided before she became Empress become open to be recorded by the clerics of the Singing Hills. And they've been off limits her entire reign. While she resided there in this particular lakeside palace, she was the exiled wife of the previous emperor. So when the cleric arrives, they're greeted by a sole remaining elderly servant. And between them, as they go through the items in the palace and recording them and their meaning, you get to see how the uprising occurred that put the empress on the throne which is pretty tricky to do when you're the Empress in exile and you have no contact with the outside world. So, and it's a, just a beautifully written exploration of the importance people place on items and on the meaning that can be evoked, the emotions that can be evoked, the memories that can be jolted by specific things, whether it's a scent or a color and the writing is incredibly just poetic. It's very beautiful and it unfolds just, it unfolds like a piece of silk. It's so gentle and it just flows just beautifully. Also entwined in this telling is a love story, but it's a very subtle one and it doesn't take up a huge part of the plot. It's just sort of there as a an extra scent. It, it's just a very beautiful story. The second of the two novellas is when the tiger came down the mountain, which is kind of what happens. In this novella, the cleric is going to a new site to record and is being guided by a young woman riding a mammoth. Now, on their way to their evening's rest stop, they're attacked by a group of tigers. Now, they know they're going to be missed if they don't show up where they're going. So rescue is possible if they can last. So they're cornered, they're protected currently, but if they fall asleep, they're kind of going to get eaten. So to buy time, it all becomes very, well, magical. And they begin telling a story about ancient, famous characters. The tigers have a problem with this. That's not the version of the story they know. So in correcting that story, the two viewpoints together form the story that you're reading in When the Tiger Comes Down the Mountain. And it's just such a magical braiding of perspectives for this story that again, it just unfolds like a fairy tale. It just, it's very simple and yet it's very beautiful. There's no criticism, there's nothing to complain about. You are left feeling incredibly satisfied that what you've just read was worth your time. And I do look forward to reading more from Nevo, and as soon as I do, I'm sure I will let you know. Um, in other news, we have what's going on for me. Well, in a couple of days, I'll be on Joanna Seuss's channel and I'll be talking with her about a specific chapter in their ongoing read of A Song of Ice and Fire. Joanna's been looking after the book A Clash of Kings, and we're going to be addressing the chapter The House of the Undying. That will be a live chat. It's going to be at least four of us, possibly as many as six, depends on who can make it. And we bring a varying degree of um, familiarity with the books with us. I've been reading it for many years and I think I'm up to about five or six times. So I don't necessarily think I have the most experienced take on it by a long way, but I have read it more than my fair share. So that should be an interesting discussion and I hope that you join us on Joanna's channel. I will link that down below. In other news, 
I have a Discord read-along lined up for June, July and August of Robin Hobb's um, other series. The series that isn't as well known and isn't rated as highly. Um, but I think part of that is explainable <laughs> by my reaction to it when I read it while it, when it was published. The Soldier's Son trilogy was published between the Tawny Man trilogy and the Rainwild Chronicles, the set of four books. And it's in a completely different world, it's completely different characters, and that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted more fits, and I didn't get more fits, and I was grumpy about it. And it didn't matter how good the story was, I wasn't going to like it. However, since discovering Booktube, I've learned that there is such a thing as reading against the text. And I'm pretty sure that that's what I was doing. So I'm going to give the trilogy another go and come back to it in June through August. There are several booktubers who will be joining me. And at the moment, we're all pretty much just going to be hanging out in the Grimoire Discord, which I will link down below. And because there's so many of us with our own channels, it's highly likely that there will be discussions on some of these channels as we go forward. I will let you know. Pretty much the only other noteworthy thing that I have to share with you is that I'm reading some Megan Lindholm. Now, Megan Lindholm is another of the uh, pseudonyms that Robin Hobb uses. Um, the actual author being Mag Margaret Ogden. Megan Lindholm is the earlier pen name. I am reading Wizard of the Pigeons at the moment. And I have to say, it's a little bit like looking at photos of the people you know when they're children because you can look into those photos and see the person that they've become and there is a real charm to that in being able to see the seeds if you like the the, the framework the structure of what will become this mammoth beast <laughs> of the realm of the elderlings I'm only halfway through the book and I can already see several of similar ways of phrasing, similar ways of sentence structure and some of the themes are very, very similar. So I'm, I'm reading it quietly fascinated. So there's definitely an advantage to going back to an author's early works. So if you've got a favourite author and they've got a particularly clever or promising early work, that you think really does show the germs of how great they're going to be, let me know in the comments because it's fascinating to me. Anyway, if you liked what I've had to say, hit like, want to come back, hit subscribe. And if you want to leave me a comment, please do. I always interact with the comments. With that, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'll see you in the live chat with Joanna. Bye.